I know what you're thinking. Why is backing up so slow? Man, that's a terrible joke. I would imagine this is a very common scenario in, in terms of backup strategy. And that is we do a full backup each week and an incremental each night. If you use our cloud services, the vast majority of our cloud backup services do exactly this, a full backup at regular intervals with incrementals in between. This person said, I expected the incrementals to be very fast, but they take just as long as the full. And why is this? That's actually a very common question that comes in on Ask Tom, or just even when I'm at conferences, people say, oh, I take up fulls every night because the incrementals didn't give me any real benefit anyway. Or there's a consensus out there that the only reason people would use incrementals is because it means you'll use less space, but other than that, you don't get a lot of benefit. That's sort of true, but sort of false, depending on the technology you're using. To explain why incrementals are almost as slow as a full, we just have to look at how what the database is doing when it actually performs the backups at various levels. If I'm doing a full or a level zero backup, they're pretty much the same thing. Just They really just determine the eligibility in an incremental backup regime. The database obviously is full of stacks and stacks of data files, which are each full of stacks and stacks of blocks. And so a full backup is relatively straightforward. We read the first block and write it out to a backup location. Could be tape, could be disk, doesn't really matter. We read the second block, it goes out to a backup location and so forth. It's not rocket science. There's obviously some smarts in there that Armand does, which means we don't have to do the old alter table space begin backup end backup that we used to do if you're of a DBA vintage like myself, but Armand knows the contents of blocks and knows how it's going to re-architect those blocks if they are fuzzy or in flight during the backup, which is pretty cool just in itself. Once we get onto an incremental backup above the level of a previous backup, so a level one above a level zero or a level two above level one, etc., the database is unchanged in size. We still actually have to look at every single block. We have to read that block. If it hasn't been changed since the last backup, then we don't have to write it. We read the next block, don't have to write it. Next block, if it's been changed, we might have to write that, etc. But the key thing is here, we still have to read every single file and every single block in the database. And that's generally why incrementals take roughly the same amount of time as a level zero backup. We're still scanning every single block in the database. The question is, can we do better? And yes, we can. And it's, this is one of those things that this always flabbergasts me. And if this is a technology I'm a, that I'm about to mention is new to people, I'm not having a go at you. It's one of those things where I think this should be pretty much the default for any database backup regime. And that is the thing being able to track only which blocks have changed in the database. And we've had this technology for a while. It's called block change tracking. It came out in Oracle 10G. Yet it still astounds me that heaps of customers I visit don't use it or are unaware of it. That's what motivated me in particular to talk about it tonight on this office hour session. So let's do a little demo. Okay, this is gonna test out my MS-DOS batch, batching skills, but we'll do our best. So the first thing I'm gonna do is to show you how long it takes to take a full backup of the database that we're running on tonight. And you can see there where I'll highlight it, we're starting an incremental level zero. So this is a level zero backup. It's a bit hard to know how long this is gonna take because we've also got Zoom doing, burning some CPU, doing some recording and writing video files as we go. But when I tested this morning, it was about 35 seconds. So you can see that, I don't know, 25 seconds elapsed time. The reason it's quite short is I spent most of today emptying out this database and making it nice and small so you wouldn't be built bored watching backups run. But we can see there that a level zero backup is about 25 seconds for this database. You can see my data files there, sysorgs users, ask Tom, etc. They're all fairly small. Let's now run a level one backup. Obviously between the time I took the level zero and the level one, I would imagine almost nothing has changed on my database, very little, maybe some dictionary tables. So it's really just going to write a very small backup, but you can see it still ran for a fair while. It was 25 seconds for a level zero backup and 15 seconds for a level one. They were comparable in time. There was a little bit of benefit in avoiding the writing cost, but typically you'd imagine an incremental that writes some blocks out, for example, the days worth of changes, is going to be of a comparable kind of time frame to a full backup. 
Obviously the benefits of incremental, even if it runs as long as a full, are still present. You can see the full backup there was about three and a half gigabytes in the first file, and the incremental was only 155 kilobytes, which is obviously very, very nice. So incremental only backing up the change blocks. But it's the length and the duration of that time that we're trying to tackle here. So I'll connect to the database using SQL Plus. We're not in RMAN anymore. And this is literally all you need to do. In your container database at the root, you do this at root level, not in the pluggable. You simply do alter database, enable block change tracking, and nominate a file. I simply chose one on my X drive here. That's it. That's all you have to do. The rest is managed automatically by the database. What this is doing is telling the database that I want to actually now track which blocks have been changed in my database. So rather than the incremental backup having to read all the blocks to work out which ones have changed, it can use this mapping file to actually work out what's going on. People are gonna ask me, what's the cost? What's the overhead? What's the performance cost? I don't know, I can't give you an exact number, but I've used blockchain tracking in just about every client database I've ever worked with over the last, I don't know, decade or so since Oracle 10 came out, I've never even noticed a performance overhead. It's very, very efficient. So let's go back to our database. I'm gonna do rerun of that same script. So I'm gonna work a level zero backup now. It's gonna take the same 25 seconds. This is the first backup I'm taking after enabling block change tracking. It doesn't know what blocks have been changed before that I set that flag. So it actually has to reroute all the blocks in the database. So this will take, one would hope, around about 25 seconds again. Ah, there we go, elapsed time 25 seconds. So for your full backups, no change. Let's now run the incremental and it's done. Look at that, elapsed time one second. Now that's obviously optimal because I ran this straight after the previous backup. So in between that time, virtually nothing has changed. But using that block change tracking file, I have a direct map into which files and which blocks have been modified. And the backup process can utilize that to very quickly identify the change blocks. If I run another incremental, you can see it's just as quick again incredibly quick. Now let's make it a little bit more realistic. Let's do some changes in our database. So I'm gonna log onto the database into one of my pluggables and do create table as select star from DBA objects. That's about 90,000 rows, somewhere in the vicinity of 12 to 13 megabytes of data I've just created in my database. Let's go back and run my next incremental. Once again, it's still breathtakingly quick one second and it's done. Do another one, once again, incredibly quick, just super fast. Let's do a directory listing. You can see here's my two level zeros, the whole database, three gigabytes in size. Here's the ones that were incrementals, whether they were block change tracking or not, they're all about 155 kilobytes. They're tiny when there's been nothing that's changed. And here's the one I took after I created that table called T, which is a copy of DBA objects. It was still blazingly fast because block change tracking let me identify the change blocks. And there's my 14 megabytes of new data that's been backed up. So block change tracking is astounding. I love it. It's just so easy. It's trivial to turn on. The overheads are negligible. And it's just a fantastic way of making your incrementals blazingly fast. When would you not use block change tracking? Probably the only examples I could think of is you may have one of those databases which uh, undergoes something close to or near a complete refresh every night. I've seen some sort of data marts where each night almost the whole thing is repopulated from scratch. It might be just a whole build of build jobs of the build summaries and, and summaries upon summaries and all that kind of stuff. If you're building a database almost from scratch every night or a huge volume to the database, why would you bother with blockchain tracking? Because you'll be copying almost all the blocks anyway. If that's the case, then maybe just stick with your fools every night. But the reality is, I would say for the vast majority of databases, the amount of volume of data that's changed each day, no matter how large that is, is typically a very small percentage of the overall size of the database. So you might get some dramatic improvements just by moving to blockchain tracking. I, I